Hey everybody, Rose Matter here, and welcome to part 75 of my Umineko Let's Play. In the last episode, we delved into uh, Kenzo's background, his past, which is something that's been kind of hinted at throughout the game, but we've never really gotten too much information about it. We know about his relationship with like the original uh, Beatrice. So we went back to the Second World War with uh, his time in the army, how he ended up on Rokunjima, his connection with Rokunjima, and of course his fateful meeting with Beatrice and how their relationship kind of blossomed. And we ended up on a little bit of a cliffhanger with, uh, you know, a stalemate between the Italians and the Japanese troops that ended in them just slaughtering each other once there was the reveal of the gold. That was another thing, is like, we learned where the gold came from and how it ended up on Rokunjima. And uh, yeah, so we left off with uh, Kinzo basically finding his will to live again and determined to save Beatrice uh, from the killings. So we're going to go back into the story and we're going to see how that turns out and uh, continue on with, uh, with their relationship. So let's get back into it. Rubes! What is Ruben stood with Beatrice behind his back and neatly shot the two men rushing at him with two 9mm bullets from his Beretta MY934. However, one of the 8mm bullets from their Type 94 semi automatic. Semi-auto pistols went straight into Ruben's chest, and this is when Kinzo's probably going to come and save her at the last minute. All three of the shooters were struck in the chest and fell down in a heap. Okay, alright, so they're all dead, so she's got to make a break for it or try and hide or something. And the thing is, I mean, she's the only woman there. They're going to know if, like, they don't find her among all the bodies and be like, okay, we got to we gotta take her out. Ruben's! She's the next person to appear. Oh, Yamamoto. Of course, I knew it. I knew it was going to turn out. I predicted that uh, Yamamoto and Kinzo were going to have a showdown. It was leading up to this. Next person to appear was the commanding officer of the Japanese soldiers, Yamamoto. The blast of three guns had just sounded. Adding on Beatrice's screams, it was hardly surprising that he had noticed the encounter. <laughs> Yamamoto spat. Beatrice used that moment to snatch up Ruben's gun. Oh, damn! Come on, Kinzo. Come on, Kinzo. We know she survives this, right? Because unless, uh... Yeah, I mean, she had to have had the baby with Kinzo. So we know that her and Kinzo obviously make it out of this alive. I just want Kinzo to take Yamamoto down. He's been pissing me off. He spat that last part at the two dying men who lay moaning at his feet. However, it wasn't particularly surprising, and this wasn't the only place it was happening. Nearly everyone met head-on these tiny, cramped tunnels. When both sides shot recklessly in a situation like that, the result was two corpses. So the way to be fastest was to pull the trigger immediately the moment you sensed another person. That was the only way to make it through this battle without ending up with a bullet in your chest. Both of these... Uh, because of these, because of this, both Japanese and Italians killed each other without hesitation, and they sometimes even pulled the trigger on their own countrymen when they unexpectedly ran into each other. And in the midst of all this, large numbers of Japanese men who had no idea what was going on ran towards the noise and became victims one after another. It didn't matter whether the other person was holding a gun or not, everyone reflexively pulled the trigger at the sight of anyone other than themselves trying to stay alive. The slaughter engulfed the entire base. There was a fierce gun battle taking place in the submarine dock. 
and a massacre resembling a hunt was taking place inside the base. Most of the non-combatants assigned to this base were killed before they knew what was going on. The Italians were indeed quite seasoned troops, but their numbers began to drop bit by bit. Blood-stained corpses lay scattered all across the base. At first, it had probably been a proper gunfight. However, as they gradually became desensitized, it devolved into the it devolved into that most basic cause of wars throughout humanity, the desire to kill all foreigners you don't understand. Whenever they had words they didn't understand, they pulled the trigger. By that point, the screams of foreigners sounded no different from those of man-shaped beasts. After all, they couldn't understand pleading in another language. So, it had long ago turned into a mere massacre. As the number of dead surpassed the number of living, silence began to return to the base. Just when it felt as though everyone had died and the desolate sound of the wind blew through the caves, there would be a sudden scream, the crisp sound of a gun, and one would remember that the massacre still wasn't over. This happened over and over again, until eventually, true silence fell. It marked the pitiful end for those led astray by gold. The leader of the Italian soldiers, Angelo, had managed to survive somehow. He encountered nothing but the corpses of friend and foe. All was quiet once more in the base. If he was careless enough to call out, he might be shot from the shadows somewhere. So he snuck around like a panther, breathing quietly and searching for the remaining enemies. There was no sign or trace of any living person. Maybe all the people in this base had died. <laughs> The Japanese struck first, but at that time, we were also talking about killing them. They simply made the first move as military men, so perhaps I should be grateful for today. Even if the boat had come to take us away, there would have been no honor for us. We would have been mere failures in our mission, unfit to face our dead comrades. Perhaps dying here in the Far East alongside my gun is a more fitting end for a soldier. From around the corner, I noticed the sound of a leg being dragged along the ground, and I strained to hear. Is someone seriously wounded and shuffling with a limp? Noticing them before they notice me greatly, greatly helps my chances. At this stage, there is no point in taking prisoners. We must dispose of all the Japanese. I'll dash around the corner, quickly check to see who they are, and shoot if it's a Japanese person. Nothing more. I've been hiding my footsteps the whole time. They probably don't know I'm here. Once the shuffling footsteps had come close enough, Angelo leaned around the corner and raised his gun. The voice that reached him spoke Italian. Oh. Oh shit. Did he maybe, like, shoot Beatrice or something and was dragging her around to use as, like, a hostage or something? Although, I don't know at this point why he wouldn't just kill her on the spot. Oh yeah, you may have killed all the Italians, but Kinzo is not gonna hesitate to kill... ...to kill Yamamoto to save Beato. Blood poured from Angelo's chest, his gun fell to the floor, then his knees, and then the rest of his body crumpled and stopped moving. Yamamoto's accuracy with the gun wasn't particularly stellar. However, Angelo had waited until they were fairly close before jumping out, so Yamamoto had been able to hit his target. And he had managed it with a short-barreled handgun in one hand, and a woman as a hostage in the other. Oh shit. Maybe he knows. He knows that Kinzo's still alive, so he's going to use Beato as like some sort of... I don't know, like a... Oh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like a gambling chip? To be like, let me have all the money, all the gold, or all she dies. I don't know why he would keep her, keep her as a hostage at this point. Oh, 
イタリア女は実に騒がしいおとなしくしてれば命までは取らんというのに<笑> It was such an obvious lie that even he wore a bitter smile. The Italians were spies working for the enemy, and they all died along with the garrison in a gunfight. That was the story Yamamoto wanted to tell, so he couldn't afford to have any Italian survivors. He probably sees this as like, yeah, it sucks my men all died, but I get the gold all to myself because nobody else knows about it. At this point, he wouldn't be able to keep the entire pile of gold, but he could at least grab as many ingots as he could carry. Even that would be worth a huge amount of money. Beatrice suddenly swung her head, smashing Yamamoto's nose hard. <laughs> she almost managed to escape. However, Yamamoto quickly grabbed her leg and tripped her. She fell into her back, and Yamamoto mercilessly stomped his foot down on her stomach and pointed his gun at her. <laughs> There we go. Kinzo had jumped out from the shadows. He was holding a gun he had stolen from one of the corpses. Hmm? Oh, shit. I mean, he never liked you, sure, Mia, so I doubt he would have let him survive anyway. Yamamoto didn't know the grenade had been a dud. The surprise attack, which he had been certain would work, had failed. So he decided that Kinzo must have tipped them off. あなたが黄金に目がくらんだからこの事態を招いたのではないのか逃げてキンゾこの男は命越してる人も撃ったわあなたも撃たれる喋るなイタリア女もう一度口を聞いたら容赦なく撃つぞ Yamamoto ground his heel into Beatrice's gut. Yamamoto。殺すは何の関係もない。ああ。銃を上官に向けるとはどういう意味か。頭を冷やせよ、愚か者め。私とお前で口裏を合わせる。あの黄金の山は私たちだけのものではないか。私一人では少々薄ねる
Uber. Was Yamamoto able to hear the last of Kinzo's word to him? In his last moments, Yamamoto seemed to grin. Then slowly, he fell over backwards, a river of blood trailing from his body. Beatrice tried to stand up, but doubled over and started coughing. ビジェ、怪我をしたのか。ああ、バラがいたむわ。その人でなしが激しく踏んだものだから。大丈夫か。折れていなければいいんだが。ね。これくらいで折れるほどイタリア女は山じゃないの。でもありがとう。あなたは
家族も友人たちも失った私をあなたにさらってほしいと願うのピーちゃんでもそれは叶えられない望みだとも分かってるならばせめて向かいの船が来るまでの数日間をあなたと一緒にいたいの胸の痛みなんて気にしないだって向かいの船に連れ去られたら私はもう死んでしまうのだからベトリチェスポークでスマイリングソフトリー She did her best to hide the pain in her chest. Oh. Looking apologetic, Kinzo lifted Beato up and gently sat her in the boat. Ikuzinas. Yapari Nihon no toko a nanjaku da wa. そうだな私は育児なしだだから君の願いは片方しか叶えられない With a clunk, he placed the object wrapped in a jacket into the boat. 片方とは Is that some gold? 迎えが来るまでの数日間でいいからの方は叶えられない But he's gonna whisk her away and that's why he like probably hid her away kept it a secret There had to be a doctor on Nijima. That's probably where he met, uh, because wasn't, uh, did they say Nanja was working on Nijima? Or he had like a, he had a thing set up on Nij uh, Nijima, right? A clinic? I'm wearing a Navy uniform. I should be able to pass myself off as a survivor of a boat carrying a VIP that was sunk by enemy ships. The doctor happens to be of the greedy sort. All the better. After all, I have right here the golden magic to make people do what I say. Alright, and that's probably how he roped Nanjo into this. She came from a distant country, took my lifeless body, and gave me a soul. A witch who came bearing gold revived me with her magic. Kimiwa. And this is where the golden witch came from. みんなと同じレシピで作ってるのに私だけがパスタから消し炭を生み出す錬金術が使えるのあなたと同じく私もあなたが生きてくれる限り生きることを許される屍あなたがいなくなったら私はすぐにでも死んでしまう死なせない本当に絶対にとってね責任だってあなたは私をさらったんだから And there he is. Kinzo san ga soko made hanashimashi ta ka? Dewa, masaka anata na no desu ka? Ojii sama ga Beatrice o tsurete itta Nijima no isha to yuu no wa? Odoroku ni atai shi ne. Nijima no isha te jiten de pin to kuru. Totsuzen, kai gun no heitai san ga gai koku jin no josei o tsurete arawale ta no desu. Odoroki mashi ta ta mo. しかもその上、軍機なので秘密で治療しろというのです。それがおじい様との初対面だったのですかそうです。それが、金蔵さんと初めての対面でした。私はそれが、金蔵さんと初めての対面でした。私はそれが、金蔵さんと初めての対面でした。私はそれが、金蔵さんと初めての対面でした。私はそれが、金蔵さんと初めての対面でした。私はそれが、金蔵さんと初めての対面でした。Oh. Wow, well, <laughs> calls it like he sees it. Well, <laughs> 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 
治療代は必ず持ってくるから担保にと言って黄金のインゴットを差し出す相手ですぞ厄介事はごめんでしたしぶしぶとですとも確かにそれもそうですねでも南條先生はベアトリーチェをかくまってくれたんですね金蔵さんほどではありませんが私にも英語の心得がありました二人の会話を漏れ聞き二人が決して厄介な何者かでないと確信したからです<笑>もちろんインゴットに目がくらまなかったといえば嘘がすぎますがな私も今よりは若かったものですからその後彼女は後ろ宮家の使いの方が来て小田原に移すとおっしゃいましてな引き取られていきました。おじいさまが自分で迎えに行ったわけではないのですか金蔵がどう六軒島の事件を言い訳したにせよ、しばらくの間は自由には動けなかっただろうよ。ですな、軍をごまかすのが。金蔵さんの人生で一番の大勝負だったと言っておりましたが。Now, I mean, to to, like, did it hidden? How did it get hidden? If everybody was dead, they wouldn't have been able to move it to like that secret bunker. It was just Kinzo, and he immediately took Beato away to the hospital. So, but he ended up with all the gold anyway. Beato Riche was in the water, and then, so then. Because like the boat was coming to pick them up, so the boat would have showed up, seen that I, he probably, I'm guessing he went to Nijima, left her at the hospital, and then went back to the、um, to Rokunjima because he knew somebody was coming for them. クワドリアン以前から二重生活はお手のものだったというわけだ。そう。<笑>何してるんですかお尻におできでも。へ<笑>へ、just waiting for it。He just like jumped away <笑>。それから、ベアトリーチェはおじいさまの保護で、別荘でいつまでも。平穏に、つつましやかに暮らしたと聞きます。それから数年の後、彼女に子供が生まれましてな。Now, what happened to the OG Beato? Maybe she died during childbirth or something? She obviously died.、Uh, there we go. And it's like the reincarnation, right? She died giving birth to the daughter, and then he feels like the daughter got reincarnated into. or、uh, the mother got reincarnated into the baby. Kinzo and Musume, yep, Umare Kawarito Shinji Tandazo, Kokoro, Naiga Shironi Surunjane. So, so this is it. What a sure Kinzo Sanga Kanojo to Sugosareta, Odawara no Sunenkan, Shirimase, Shikashi, Sonogono, Kyoma de no Kinzo San O Mireba, Hono Sunenkan de Atemo, Karega Ikani Kanojo of Kaku Aishaka. うかがい知ることができるでしょうそうですねそして娘のためにクワドリアンを作ったというわけか金蔵さんは潜水艦の黄金を元手に巧みに立ち回りたちまちのうちに財産を築き上げていきました、okay. so、gold was hidden away. また持ち前の英語力を生かし GHQ に強いコネクションを作ってみるみるうちに大富豪となられたのです。I guess they must have, like, they must have hidden it away,、uh, got all the soldiers beforehand to move all the gold somewhere, and then afterwards that's when all the you know, gunfire broke out. So, alright, that makes sense. この辺はリオンさんに説明する必要はありますまい。ええ、その莫大な財産で、六軒島を買い取り、屋敷を建てます。小田原の親族たちは無人島を丸ごと買い取ったおじいさまを水郷だと笑ったそうです10トンの黄金がポケットに収まる大きさだったなら金蔵も島を買わなかったろうよ He hid the gold somewhere in Rokunjima built up a fortune with the ingots he'd taken out of it and then bought up the whole treasure island ですなそして
後宮家の黄金伝説が始まるのですインゴットには片翼のわしが刻印されていたと聞くが片翼のわしというよりは片翼に見えてしまうわしというべきでしょうなそれはどういう意味ですか、oh, so those ingots were already so he took I'm guessing rather like they were already pressed with that it's probably an Italian thing right like the the eagle and then he took that and he made that his like family crest in honor of Beatrice ヨーロッパに多いでしょう翼を広げたわしを紋章にしたものは。Oh my goodness! It seemed like it was the other way around. Like he had that crust and he he pressed that into the gold, but it was the other way around. He took it from the gold. サロ共和国の国旗にもわしが。Oh my gosh! いやいや高でしたかな。It seems so obvious when you think about it. が刻まれています。刻印が薄かった。あるいは粗雑だったということか。そうです。戦時下の粗雑な刻印でした。本来は翼を広げたわしの紋章が刻印されるべきだったのでしょう。それがちょうど斜めに立ち切ったように半分薄れて消えていたのです。翼を広げたわしが半分消えて、それが片翼のわしに見えた。金蔵は自分の運命を大きく変えたベアトリーチェの黄金に片翼のわしを見て。それを自分の紋章とすることを決めたに違いあるまい果たして正しく刻印されていたならそれは共和国旗の鷹だったのかそれともまさか相当のいやいやそんなまさかあの莫大な黄金の山の前で金蔵さんと杯を傾け合いながら黄金ロマンで世を明かすのはなかなかに楽しいことでしたもっとも金蔵さんはその刻印から黄金の出所を探られることを嫌いましてな外部に持ち出す黄金にはわざわざ自分の片翼のわしをデザインした別の刻印を打ち直していたようですがお前には見せるだけだったのか金蔵もケチだな<笑>無論外富豪になった後金蔵さんは再び私のもとへ訪れ未払いだった治療費をしっかり払ってくれましたとも治療費にはちと多すぎましたのでなちゃんとお釣りを払いましたがそれ以来おじい様と交流をそうです金蔵さんは私が秘密を守ってベアトリーチェをかくまったことをことのほか深く感謝してくれましてなおじい様はかつての小田原の親族たちは欲深の嘘つきばかりだとおっしゃっていました南條先生の義理がたさが嬉しかったに違いありませんおじい様のような方がどうしてあなたにだけは心を開いたのかわかる気がします私にも多少の異国趣味とチェスの趣味がありましてな金蔵さんとは以来息を統合しましてこうして細々としかし気づけば随分と長くお付き合いをさせてもらっています大きな金を扱うやつほど小さな金にもきっちりしてる治療費以上をもらおうとしなかったあんたの日儀さに惹かれるところもあったんだろうよとんでもない大きなお金に怯えてしまっただけです後になってから後悔しましたとも At least Nanjo can be honest with himself I mean he got a pretty, pretty cushy job after though he basically he got to just be Kinzo's like Soul physician, he probably gets paid quite well for it. Do you know, Mukashi Kara, Kimo got cheese, I mono de Stina. So Nakotoane, Kimoa, Jubin, damn well. So the Shoka, Usiji demo, Ugrishi, this one. Seji Jane. After Kenzo dies, Nanjo is complicit in keeping his death a secret for at least a whole year. Of course, Natsui must have given him a fairly he heavy set of. Hefty sum of hush money. All the same, he's at least gutsy enough to withstand the pressure from Kinzo's children for that amount of time without slipping up once. Taishita kimottama jane ka. Giri ga tai no ga omae no shoubun nan da ro yo. Hehehe. Sore shika toriye ga nai mono de shite. Ojii sama wa yoi yujin ni megumare ta to omaimasu.
おじい様にとってベアトリーチェという女性がどれほど人生の大部分を占めてきたか分かった気がします何も分かってなんかいねえ I feel like we learned a lot actually. Okay, yes, I know. That's the big thing. That's all Will cares about. But like all this stuff leading up to it, I'm feeling like I'm starting to understand stuff more. So I don't know. So I don't know. So I d o こここれれまでに聞いいいたたどのベアトリーチェも殺殺さされれててなどいないそれを俺たちが殺されたことにしようとしている、okay. ベルンカステルにとってはこれこそが本当の葬儀なんだ誰も殺されたことを知らないそれを私たちが暴こうとしているお前つくづく察しがいいな仮想の駒と話してるとは思えん It's funny Lion or sorry Leon is just In some ways, perceptive, but in some ways, well, it's just like try to keep up. Like, we already understand all this. Like, the thing about Nanjo. And、this is when we're going to get to the uncomfortable truth. I mean, literally, this,、uh, this part is called the birth of Beatrice. So we're going to get to the daughter now and all the ickiness that's going to probably come with it. To indicate who they should talk to next, Will nodded in the direction of George, Jessica, and Baria. Maria seemed to be lecturing the others about something. Hey, it's a good thing, Beatrice. カップの中にね魔法でキャンディーをいっぱい生み出してくれたの伏せたカップの中にそりゃすげえぜ確かに魔法だマリアちゃんは魔女とか魔法とかそういうものが大好きですからマリアは彼女を持ちたいと思っていたのでそれは彼女が本当に大切なパートのエピソード魔女の権威に話を聞かないわけにはいかねえな If looking for someone to ask about Beatrice, Mario would rise to the top of the list. The Beatrice he spoke of wasn't the real Beatrice spoken of by Kinzo and the others. However, on to the Rogan Gym of 1986, the being that the name Beatrice referred to was probably the Beatrice that Mario always talked about. Yeah, right? Ushura Mia Badler, the one who was made to fight as Beatrice's opponent in many games. The most important person in this game and this tale. The battler in this world would probably be the peace version, but even so, it should be possible to get some vital information out of him. Will probably wanted to talk with Badler too, but he was nowhere to be seen in the cousins group. I mean, I feel like it would be too easy. Badler knows everything. It feels like it'd be cheating to talk to him. Badler-kun は今回の葬儀には欠席しています。もっとも年の近いいとこと残念です。仲はいいのかええ、もちろんバトラが何かスケベな出現をするたびに尻をつねってるんだろ<笑>おやよくご存知で推理は可能でしたかバトラに同情する I know he better he gets pinched a lot <laughs> Burn Castle said that everything was everything was gathered here since Badler isn't here that probably means it's possible to find out everything without asking for his side of the story Or maybe she's intentionally hiding the core elements and making us take the long way around as some part of Fickle's witch's game. With a roguish smile, Leon pinched the air, index finger against middle. Oh, yeah? Jiki Toshi Samadaze. So, Jiji no Kaigo, a mo e no Kayo. Oh, Jessica, does that sound a little bit, uh, I don't know. She's probably happy about that. She's like, I don't want to be the future heir. That sounds too stuffy for me. It's gonna be weird, like, yeah, Jessica having, like, a sibling. <laughs> At least Leon is impartial. No mercy, even for Jessica. Will felt a bit gratified. So, 
クラウスの子で時期投資ということはジェシカは妹に当たるんだな。Once again, they're intentionally avoiding saying, you know, Kroos's child, not Kroos's son or Kroos's daughter. Intentionally not gentifying. Gen gentifying? Is that a word? <laughs>、um, Leon. He was so used to Jessica being an only child, though, the scuffle between the two looked perfectly natural. Something didn't feel quite right about it. Jessica, more scosh, you more to the she, Kotobazuka, you were taking a look, eh? Three then you to more scosh, Toshigoro, no Josera, she, Kotobazuka, you were kills getting me to Becky, eh? Ato, Jiki told you someone anti Obikatawa Kirai that te, eats my terio. Who says it? What does she want? What does she ask you? Yeah. Jessica probably wishes that she had like a, a older sibling to take the reins so the pressure would be, would be off her. I was thinking that. I was like, you know, if Leon pinches people for being perverts, like the butt seems like the most perverted place or one of the more perverted places to pinch. Like, pinch like the.、Uh, I don't know, like the elbow or the ear or something, you know? Jessica, o k a k s a m o m i r a s t e to you, Noni. Mata Kasa needs Keratakana. Areva, Arete, Naka Mutsumajina. Leon, a Jik Tosh to stay, Hino Uchidokoro no nice, Subarashi to the Karane. Ma, Subarashi Sugite, Jessica Chan no Kimotimo Chopiri Wakarana. 何をしても比較されるだからグレルトもしジェシカちゃんが一人っ子としてお<笑>、oh, George、Will's gonna be like、hmm. yes. 真相の霊場になってたと思う<笑>それは面白い想像だね安心しろあの性格は一人っ子でも変わらねえ正直お兄ちゃんこの人誰あなたとは初対面ですよねでも後ろ宮家にはお詳しそうだ。僕はジョージ、彼女はマリア、よろしく。ウィルダ、ベアトリーチについて調べている。知っていることを聞かせてほしい。ベアトリーチェ<笑>マリア、like, sit down, Will. I'm gonna just sit. We're gonna be talking for a while. ほらね、ベアトリーチェはいるな。Though Maria had looked hostile towards this unfamiliar man, as soon as she heard the name of the witch she loved pass his lips, her eyes began to sparkle. Hora, Maria chan. And George is like, Yep,、uh, just there you go, there's Will. Go talk to him for a bit and leave us alone so we can stop talking about bad to reach all the time. <laughs> Maria suddenly stuck out her small hand, and Will reached out for it reflexively. Now she's gonna turn into Witch Maria. Maria, right? As soon as he did, he felt a bright light seeping out from the gap between their hands. The theater going power that Bern Castell had given him had affected Maria. Beatrice, eh? Lokenjima no Majo na no. It's my name, Maria got Lokenjima ni kuru tabini, isani asande kurena. So, I guess when they said the birth of Beatrice, I thought it was going to go into like the daughter, but it seems more like they're talking about the 1986 Beatrice. So, maybe they mean like the metaphorical birth of that Beatrice. Maria, no, ne, it's one no, Tomodachi, de, Maria, just so she had no, Nakamana, no, uh. The light grew brighter and brighter. This time, he could feel himself being drawn into Maria's world. We're probably going to get to see Sakataro as well, aren't we? There she is. I'm Usher Mia Maria. My mama is Rosa. My papa. I don't have a papa. I think I remember mama showing me a picture long ago and saying, This is your papa. It was a picture of a man with a dark suntan on a beach wearing a swimsuit. Later on, when I learned what papa meant, I asked mama to show me that picture again. But she said there wasn't any photo like that. But there was. I drew a picture of it and showed it to mama. When I did, she got really mad and said the photo didn't exist, or that if it did, she had already thrown it away. Ever since then, she kept saying that I didn't have a papa. Do you know? Papa and mama are not able to do anything. But 
それは嘘なんだよ少女解体か I was about to say it's like the immaculate conception All right, Maria ミオ乙女が身ごもって男の子を産むであろうその名はインマヌエルなりマリアはもし男の子に生まれていたならそれが名前だったかもしれないマタイデン一章二十節違うよ二十三節二十節は過去にこれらを生まれた時、oh、見つかりが夢に現れていった They get well being like oh I know stuff and Mary's like bitch you thought <laughs> ラビデの子ヨセフよ妻マリアを迎えることを恐れるなその腹に宿る者は精霊によるものなりお前の父親は精霊だというわけだパパがいるのが当たり前だとみんなに言われたパパがいないなんておかしい変な子だかわいそうな子だと言われたでもママに聞いてもパパなんかいない知らない存在しないと言われた聞くだけで怒られて叩かれただからマリアは自分が誰から生まれたかよくわからなくなったマリアは人間として正しくない未熟で不正な存在みんなとは違うおかしなかわいそうな子だと気がついた親も他人も関係ねえお前はお前だそれを未熟な幼児に教えるのはきっと難しかったろうねひょっとしたら幼稚園の先生はいじめられて泣く私にそう諭してくれたのかもしれないでもそんな慰めでは私の心の空白うん疑問どんな言葉も私の疑問に答えてはくれなかったその疑問に答えたのがザ・ブックだというのか神父様がね来たの。I think his sermon was part of a class to enrich our minds. To most of us kids, it was no different from an ordinary fairy tale a teacher could have told us. No, it was harder to understand, and I think that made us bored. Then at the end, the priest said something important. Kami wa nan demo shite iru ka. Um, dakara Maria wa kita. Maria ni wa mama shika i nai. Papa wa nai. Papa ga nak temo, Maria wa mama kara umare te kita. Sore wa. おかしくて悲しいことなのって。The priest taught me. He said there was nothing strange about a child having no papa. After all, Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, and the one who gave birth to him was the Blessed Virgin Maria. <laughs> Maria. <laughs> I was surprised. Maria, the name I was given, was the answer all along. だから。マリアはびっくりして神父様に聞き直したの聖母マリアは一人で赤ちゃんが産めたんだってじゃあマリアも一人で赤ちゃんが産めるのって神父は何と答えた聖母マリアが赤ちゃんを見ごもれたのは精霊のおかげだからってマタイデン一節二十章後段その腹に宿るものは、right. 精霊によるものなり。So、she's just obsessed with that aspect of the, of the Bible. I was like, like, I know that Maria becomes like hyper fixated on things.、Um, but like, damn, if she can pull like any verse out and know exactly what it is, I'm like, that's, that's very impressive. またまたマリアはびっくりした。これはどういうことだと思うお前はこう解釈した。後ろ見やマリアには人間の父はいない。本当の父は精霊だと。Regardless of what the Bible actually meant, the young, sad girl who had lost her sense of identity because of her lack of a father had finally created a way to understand herself. それを知ったとき、私はなぜ他の子たちと自分だけが違うのかを理解したの。私をバカにするみんなはヨセフの子。でも私だけは違った。私はみんなより劣ってなんかいない。私は神の子、精霊の子だった。帰ってママに話したよ。マリアにはパパなんていない。ママはママで、マリアは神様の力で生まれてきたんだよって。It was probably painful for Rosa whenever Maria asked about her father. 
Why do I have no papa when everyone else has a papa and a mama? Every time she asked this, Rosa flew into a rage and changed the subject. And now, somehow or other, Mari had independently found an explanation that satisfied her. She had no papa. She was the child of mama and god. It isn't difficult to imagine Rosa, after hearing the explanation the young girl had found in the Bible, might have gone along with it as though it were true. ベアトは宇宙を生み出す最小の人数を二人だと言った。私はこれを両親がいないと子は成せないという意味だと感じた。その時私は思ったの。ベアトは魔女だけれど人間から生まれた魔女なんだって。ベアトは精霊の子じ
Suddenly, she was sitting right there. I didn't know anyone who spoke that way. I quickly realized she was someone I didn't know at all. あいたいと言ったのはそなただ。わらわの島に魔女が訪ねてくるから出迎えてやったというのに、そなたはわらわの名を問うというのか。ベアトリーチェ。いかにもわらわがベアトリーチェである。確かに。唐突だな。うん。
姿を保つことさえ満足にできぬほどに衰えている。A convenient excuse. <笑>さっき聞いた。あの鎮守の社のせいで力が出せないって。力を取り戻すにはかなりの時間をかける。虹をキャンディーにしてやることは今はできぬ。しかし、ささやかな魔法にてその一端を見せることはできようぞ。見たいベアトの魔法見たいよかろうしかしそなたにも協力を求めねばならぬぞ先ほども言ったいかにそなたが汚れなき魂を持とうとも人間はもはや汚れ魔法を拒む毒素に満ちているとうん聞いた反魔法の毒素があるって聞いたマリアの読んだ本には載ってなかっただからそれを知ってるベアトはすごい。Oh, Maria, she's just so. She just wants to believe so bad. She's so naive. And so trusting. Beatrice lifted up an empty teacup, then turned it around in front of Maria to show there weren't any tricks or strings. Fuseta cup に candy が現れる魔法か。どうしてわかるのウィルはすごいね。魔女の使う魔法もわかるんだね。魔女の魔法の基本だからな。カップは何の仕掛けもない。まあ、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、She had a desire to discover the occult in others, to help her believe that there was an occult side to herself. That was why she agreed to help Beatrice with her magic. She didn't want her own toxin to ruin her chance of knowing the miracles of magic. Yoizo, sa, sono kappu o akete miru ga i. Oh, candy da! Candy da! Wara wa kara sonata e no aisatsu ga wari to. 新しき魔女との出会いと友情にそれを送ろう。This was a true miracle of magic. For the first time, I felt shame and embarrassment in my conceit. I could feel the sense of omnipot、um, omnipotence disappear. The idea I was the child of the Holy Ghost and the most important and special person in the world. Instead of a child of the Holy Ghost who can't do anything, I'd rather be a witch who can use magic. I, Uchirumiya Maria, wanted to become a witch. Starting off, I was a witch apprentice. Already, I was obsessed with Beato. Maria, I want to become a witch! 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 デシオモツコトナドデキヌワ。マリアは、マジョノデシニワ、ナレナイ。うん、ワラワのデシニワデキヌ。しかし、友人にはできる。本当うん、ワラワとソナタは、これより友人だ。これからも共に、深き魔女の世界を語り合おうではないか。いいやそれは土産にせよ食べずにそなたの可愛らしいカバンに収めよ。Story of her? Maria, so no candy wa. Maho de umida sareta monoda. Ueni, Moroi. Sonata ga warawa no sonzai o, so no doxo de hite stanara. Toke de kiete simauda. Oh, yada. Beato karamorata. Taisetina maho kiere no yada. 
ならばわらわという魔女に出会ったことを決してそなたがわらわとのささやかな約束を守る限りそなたがまたこの島へ来るときは再びわらわがそなたを迎えようぞおう守る約束って何まずはそうだな家へ帰ったら手を洗ううがいをする<笑> She's being like a mom. It's like her mom might tell her to do those things and she wouldn't listen. But if Beato tells her, she'll do whatever she wants. そなたの体は清められわらわもさらに魔力を取り戻すさすれば次に来る時はより素晴らしい魔法を見せようぞうん約束守る絶対 You know how like some parents will be like If you don't do what I want you to do I'm gonna call Santa and tell them you're being bad You're not listening Rosa could do that with Beatrice Be like If you don't do what I say, I'm gonna call Beato and she won't be happy. Or have Beato tell you what to do and she would do whatever she wants. I have no kids, but there we go. Parenthood hack right there. ここれが私の初めてのベアトリーチェとの出会いだったと思う。マリア had this cute story and watch well just like shut it down. Just be like, uh, okay. So you think that you met a witch. そのもらった雨は。Because he's all about cutting to the heart of it. Like, he does, I think he does know when to be delicate, maybe with a child, but he still said the way that he words things to Mario. So it's like, so that is when you thought you were a witch. Ends up not saying, so that's when you became a witch. Mm. <laughs> もっと疑っていたら、雨は消えてなくなっていたに違いない。そしたら私は、目の当たりにした魔法の奇跡の証拠を失うところだった。雨が、溶けていたのか。雨というよりは、キャラメルだったと思う。溶けかかって、ぐにゃぐにゃだった。Well, it's like, so basically what car、uh, caramel candies do. Do you guys say caramel or caramel? I bounce back between the two. Summertime, right? Or no, it'd be October, because that's usually when they go to the conferences. Or maybe they went. Maybe they go in the summertime too. So it's time when it was hot. At least, he's, at least he's not as cruel as Erica, where Erica would sort of be like, ah,、oh, duh, it was summertime, of course it melted. その日のお夕飯の時にみんなに話したクラウスおじさんに笑われたそしたら隣の席のママにその話は終わりにしなさいって怒られたおお。Like whoever, whoever is impersonating Beatrice or whoever Beatrice is, she would know that Mario would tell everybody about their meeting, whether she wanted that intentionally to happen or not, I'm not sure. 隣の席序列上お前の席はローザと隣り合わないはずだ親族会議じゃないもんママとマリアだけが訪ねた時の話だからクラウスおじさん一家全員とママとマリアしかいない席は詰めるから親族会議の時とはお席がちょっと違うのうんお前の隣の席にローザだったんだなうんそれが何I'm a little curious about that too. Like, did they ever talk about going to、uh, see each other any other times other than the family conference? 
六軒島以外で会ったことはないよだってベアとは体が希薄で自由には動けないんだものマリアの体に乗り移ってもいいよって言ったけど島からは離れられないからできないって言ってたその後は六軒島へ行くたびに会っていたということかうん私たちは大の仲良しになったベアトと話せば話すほどに彼女は本当にすごい魔女だと思い知ったよ彼女は会うたびにいつも素敵な魔法を見せてくれたそして私とは異なる魔法体系を聞かせてくれて二人で魔法の深淵を語り合ったよ私は早く彼女の高みに登りたいと思ったベアトのような魔女の息に達したいと願ったベアトリーチを母親に紹介したことはないよママは毒素が強すぎるからまだ会えないって言ってた。But a convenient excuse that she has every time and Mario completely buys it. 大人はほとんどダメだって。Though there was the one door where people actually did meet Beato in person. Rosa saw her, Kyrie saw her, a couple of other people saw her. I think that was the second door. And I believe Rosa talked to her. Like face to face. お前以外にベアトリーチェの姿を見ることができたものはいるのか最初は無理だった魔力が弱いからね毒素に少しでも近づくと体が壊れてしまうってでも次第に魔力を蓄えてマリア以外の毒素の少ない人の前にも現れられるようになったよそれは誰だうーんあんまり多くない使用人の一部の人だけだった。Oh, servant, how convenient, huh? 具体的には。今日いる使用人全員。お、ゴーダさんは違うと思う。No, not Gota. Gota is always left out of things. So it feels like all of the servants that have been there for a while, they're all in cahoots with something. Like, I mean, they were all in on pretending that Kinzo was dead. So obviously they have like some sort of agreements that they're going to stick to a story. So that's. I'm guessing like that's related. Smurry, Genji, Shannon, Kano, Kumasawa no Yonin to you, Kotoka. And Yenji and Kumasawa both knew about the baby as well. Ato, Nanjo sensei mo. And Nanjo, okay. Nanjo also knew about at least the original Beatrice. And he did know about Beato giving birth to a, a baby as well, though that was in. What's the place called again? Oriara? Or... Oh, oh. It starts with an O. I can't remember exactly what it's called. Apparently, they would sometimes come to visit Tamaria and Beatrice's witch tea parties. Of course, it was only for small things, like bringing them extra tea. However, they were certainly aware of Beatrice and even talked with her. Okay, so that includes Canon and Shannon as well. Brought things to Beatrice. So now I'm just confused all over again. I was like so sure it was it was them that were,、uh, you know, portraying Beatrice, but now it's like now they say the servants brought them things while she was.、Uh, okay, I don't even know anymore. The servants were Beatrice to a dose of Stita. Sonsai Shinai has no Kakujinda. Odoritari was Shinai Noka. And this wasn't the Beatrice that died、um, in the cliffs because that was when Rosa was young. So Mario wouldn't have been around. So this is a completely different one. But the Beatrice was the one who was the one who was the one who was the one who was the one. She said that the servants treated Beatrice as an honored guest, and sometimes they were permitted to witness the new miracle of magic along with Mario. Smile. 1986年の六軒島でベアトリーチに実際に会えたのは、like、clue, ゴーダを除く使用人4人とお前と南条の合計6人だけだったということか、うん、ベアトもそれ以外の人の前に現れるにはもっともっと魔力を蓄える必要があると言ってたつまりそれ以外の人間の前にもやがては姿を現すつもりだったわけかうんすべての人間たちに自分を認めさせるこそが自分の復活の日だって言ってた、okay. so、that's related to the 
you know, the day of the, uh, you know, the epitaph and all that stuff is, I guess, like the final day when everything, everybody died and she is resurrected. This is what I'm stuck on now. <laughs> Maria, the servant, and Nanjo had acknowledged her. She had probably chosen these humans whose anti-magic toxin was weakest and appeared before them first. Beatrice's game must have been to subtly increase the number of humans who could recognize her until she could make everyone on the island acknowledge her. In that case, the last person for Beatrice to appear in front of was probably Badler. Would be Badler, the one said to have the strongest anti-magical power. Does this mean Beatrice thought that Badler would be the hardest one to convince? And that's why he's always left, you know, alive until the end. It seems true Badler was one of Beatrice's goals. However, if we go with Badler's chestboard thinking, we might say Beatrice, who wanted others to acknowledge her existence, was someone who could not exist unless she was acknowledged. Badler reached this thought back to himself in the first game. Yes, there is something different about the Beatrice of 1986. She's different from the Italian Beatrice, or the Corridorian Beatrice, both of whom certainly did exist. The Beatrice of 1986, the one whom we are so familiar with in a mysterious way, yet who has no existence. What does it mean to kill the Beatrice who has no existence? The minimum number of people required to uh, create a universe is two. However, Maria has said that even a single person could give birth to a universe. And yet, Maria has desired a second person. A second person to nurture the world she had given birth to alone. Because if it was born and not nurtured, it would die and disappear? Let's replace the word universe with Beatrice. The minimum number of people required to create Beatrice is two. However, even a single person could give birth to her. And yet, that single person desired a second person. A second person to acknowledge the Beatrice created by the first person. This feels like such a riddle! The meeting with the second person is the scene that Maria had just described. The single person who created Beatrice had looked for a second person to acknowledge Beatrice, and selected Maria. We don't need Furudo Erika's heartless reasoning to know that the teacup magic was a sleight of hand. Maria, believing in the story about the anti-magic toxin, would close her eyes whenever magic happened. Any sleight of hand would be possible while she had her eyes closed. The caramel Maria had been given as proof of her meeting with the witch had melted a little because Maria had doubted, in a season where one was likely to put ice in their tea. It was only natural for a caramel left in the bag to melt. It was sure me Maria, the girl who's too trusting and will accept a story easily. Beatrice appeared first in front of this girl, who had, in the language of witches, very little of the anti-magic toxin. We liken the creation of Beatrice to the laying of an egg. Then when a single person creates her, it's no more than a delusion. Like a chick inside the egg. If and only if a second person acknowledges her, the shell cracks and she appears- Chick Beato! She appears- She only appears when a second person comes to warm the egg. When Mari acknowledged Beatrice, she finally hatched, and the chick was born. In that case, Mariette Socia, which nurtured Beatrice and her system of magic, was like a nest. Beatrice had a dignified presence, called herself the Witch of Rokunjima, and claimed to have lived a thousand years. Thinking about the Beatrices who appeared in the previous game, this sounds less like the chick Beato, and more like Beato the Elder. So does this mean the meeting Maria had just spoken of marks the birth of Beato the Elder? The egg itself had already been created by the first person. During the time before the meeting with Maria, it matured fully inside its shell, becoming the character with a dignified presence of a thousand years. Then when Maria acknowledged it, it hatched, and the Witch of Rokunjima finally gained a form. Perhaps that moment marks the birth of Beatrice of 1986. The younger Chick Beato was born out of love for Badlar, since that birth had not yet occurred at this point in time. Then the birth of Beato the Elder and the existence of Beatrice at this time must have nothing to do with Badlar. Okay, so all this time it made it seem like I was thinking maybe like his... His betrayal, his sin, was what created Beatrice, or this persona, but I guess it's like kind of independent of it? 
Are you enjoying this reasoning, Burn Castell? If you are, let's at least have some applesauce from the audience. Or applesauce? Applause. Oh my god. <laughs> Am I maybe a little hungry? <laughs> oh, I feel like they have mentioned applesauce in this game before. I feel like Bird Castell and, uh, and Lambda Delta have like eaten applesauce before. That's hilarious. Great. Thanks a bunch. <laughs> マリアはベアトに魔法で叶えてほしい願いがたくさんあるの。だからベアトが復活するのに協力してるの。願いとは何だ。いっぱいある。内緒。黒木魔女からママを守ってほしいか。どうしてウィルは何でもわかるの？ <笑>すごいよ。うん。魔女に願わねば取り戻せない世界だと。お前はもう思っているのかうん。ママは大好き。優しい。うん。うん。いつまでも一緒にいたい。永遠に。うん。今度はマリアージュソルシエルについて聞きたい。うん。どうしたやだ。Don't <笑> Maybe it's because that's supposed to be like a sacred thing between her, Beato, and Angie. So she's like, I don't want to talk about it. Mari suddenly started acting distant, bowed her head, and left without waiting for a reply. It was a very un Maria like thing to do. I see. So the game master has moved the piece. Apparently, she's telling me to ask about something different for now. At some point, Leon had started chatting with the other family members. Jessica seemed to be getting irritated at having her butt pinched so much, and George was trying to calm her down. Jessica and George. Guess I'll hear their stories next. Compared to Maria, the anti-magic toxin is very strong in these two. At least in the beginning of the other games, they didn't acknowledge Beatrice. Maria showed me the point of view of one who believes... Now to hear from those who don't. Ah, eh, 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 あざになってねえか。あいつマジで容赦ねえ。ジェシカ、何か言ったかい？何も何も、もう十分懲りたって。Leon, who had apparently been chatting with the adult siblings, spun around with a smile and stared at Jessica. Looks like the older siblings firmly in control around here. あいつ、その上地獄耳だな。ようやく。リオンってやつが理解できてきた。そうそうそうそう。昔から妙に勘が良くて。その絵ほら、大人受けが妙にいいし。私は家でも学校でも比べられてる。そういえば、リオンは中学も高校も生徒会場だったね。Leon feels like a little bit of a Mary Stew, Gary Stew, uh whatever they are. Like the perfect piece. I guess they have to be if they want to be kind of the Watson, right? To, uh, to Will's Sherlock Holmes. バドミントンの部長もやってたよね。行く先々でリオンと比較されて非デーメにあったというわけだ。私は中学に入って行ったぜ。その時はもう副会長やってた。来年は生徒会長になる気だろう。私の肩身が狭くなるからやめてくれって
そんなリオンの妹であることを誇りにも思ってるんでしょべ、べ、別にそんなこと思ったことはねえぜああねえぜ全然ねえぜ<笑>上が完璧だと息もつまらだが他人は他人お前はお前だ何も萎縮することはないお前のしたいように精一杯好きにしたらいいもちろんでも母さんたちは後ろ宮リオンの妹として恥ずかしくないよあと引き継げってうるさい生徒会に入れだのバドミントンやれだの低音楽はやっていないのかえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっ People often like to blame their family for what they've grown up to be like. But even in a different world with a different family, the interests of the girl called Jessica are the same as ever. It's admirable she has such a true and constant interest in something. Nothing wrong with the extraordinarily accomplished sort, like Leon, but kids who act their age do have their charms. So you eat Katanga Ijibanda. Oh, Kashiro, say she will. So, so you do more. All you got to. Apparently, no one had ever told Jessica they approved of how she lived. And the direct way Will had put it made it her、uh, the direct way Will had put it made her turn red and hang her head in embarrassment. Kondo, I'm my touch in your Hanashina Kitai. Saki, Maria Chan to Stita? So that Beatrice in Tsite, Stilkoto Kitai. Maria Chan, Okartoya, Majo no Kotoga, Daiski da Karane. Kanojuni to the Beatrice, Anime no Hiroin to Onaji. Akoga Nanika Sasaina Kotoga Aru Tabini. それを魔女の魔法によるいたずらだと信じてるお前は大人だなそしてそうは思ってもマリアには絶対に言わないところも大人だ当然さ子供の夢は子供の時にしか見られないその貴重な経験を尊重するのが大人の仕事だと思ってるよお前とは話が合いそうだジョージスポジションは that to be a tree chair is nothing more than a fairy tale However, that phrase, respecting a child's dream is the adult thing to do, that might be worthy of further scrutiny. When she got a candy from Beatrice by magic, Maria probably got excited and told George and the others. Then the adults followed his lead and positively went along with her story, as adults should. However, there could be other ways this sort of reaction could occur, other than as an adult's response to a child's claim. For example, it could be an inferior's response to the claims of their superior. If Kinzo, tyrant of the Ushirmia family, claimed Beatrice existed and had revived, perhaps the other members of the family would positively go along with his story, as his inferior should. Though Beatrice only appeared directly in front of a limited number of people, it's probably safe to say that the concept of her existence penetrated deeply within the Ushirmia family, even among those who had never seen her. However, no matter how deeply that concept penetrated, she was only viewed as a sort of fairy tale character. It would be necessary to transform the concept of that character from an imaginary fairy tale into reality. So, a person attempting to do this would need to perform something that could only conceivably be done by magic. And that something was the series of witch incidents that started with the nighttime window opening pranks played by Beato the Elder, and ultimately escalated to locked room murders. Beato the Elder referred to this, saying that the anti magic power filling the mansion would be weakened bit by bit the more she made her existence known. Beatrice, why did you desire so greatly to make all others accept your existence? Because the imaginary becomes the truth if everyone accepts it? Because at that moment, the being called Beatrice will be acknowledged and will become human? In that case, before Beatrice is acknowledged by all people, she's less than human. She's furniture. There's that thing about furniture, right? Bringing up the furniture again. Why would furniture want to become human? It feels like this was the theme of the previous game. Because they want to gain the right. Furniture cannot love, I guess. 
So they try to become human for the right to blank. I'm guessing that's love. That was the whole that was the whole precipice of like the last episode was about furniture's rights to be in relationships and have the ability to love a human. It really is quite simple. It's directly connected to the reason the chick Beato was born in the first place. <laughs> I can't ignore the heart. ベアトリーチャの葬儀に参加しておいてこんなことを言うのも申し訳ないけれど僕も説明できるほどベアトリーチャという人物のことに詳しくないんです申し訳ないその話はここに住んでるジェシカちゃんの方が僕よりももう少